Man, I need a haircut. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to my channel and more importantly, welcome to my first ever GAMSAT workflow video. Today we're looking at section 3 of the GAMSAT, which you might know as the sign section. I myself was able to get an 82 in that section and I will take you through atomic habits that I believe helped me get that score. We're going to talk about what little atomic habits that you can implement in your study routine to get a score of 70 plus, 80 plus or even 90 plus regardless of what scores you've gotten in the past or whether or not you know you've been a biomed student or a med science student because it really doesn't matter. The first thing that I want to talk about in terms of section 3 is whether or not you should spend months and months studying the theory for this test because as we know in section 3 of the GAMSAT the way questions are presented are in chemistry, biology and physics. I'm here telling you that you should not spend more than two weeks studying theory and here's why. Let's look at the official guide and what it tells us. The guide tells us that stimulus is presented in a variety of formats including text, mathematical graphs, tables and diagrams. Um, in addition to testing, reasoning and problem solving within a scientific context, this section examines the recall and understanding of basic science concepts. Okay, the most important line here is the line where they talk about reasoning and problem solving within a scientific context. That's literally what this test is really about. It's not a science, it's not a chemistry test, it's not a physics test, it's not a biology test. They go on to even list the exact skills you need to ace this section. It's pretty clear what they're trying to get at. Although the, the context in which these questions are going to appear might seem to you like, oh, this is some sort of context I have been exposed to before. For example, say a momentum question, it might take you back to your year 12 days when you did learn about momentum. However, Acer doesn't really care too much about whether or not you understand momentum. What they care about is more high level analytical skills such as your mathematical reasoning or your spatial reasoning, etc. Some skills that I definitely worked on before the sit where I did get my high section 3 were spatial reasoning, mathematical reasoning, comprehension, extrapolation, interpolation. These things you can really, really put your money on coming up in the, in the coming game side. So instead of spending a month, two months going over stereochemistry, acid bases and whatnot, take the time to work on these high level analytical skills more because that's, that's where the marks are really are. The idea of working on your high level analytical skills brings up the next point I want to talk about which is knowing your strengths and weaknesses. The biggest trap that I see pre-med students falling for when sitting for the GAMSAT is just doing lots and lots and lots of questions for no reason. You don't have to do 5,000, 6,000 questions to get a high score. From personal experience, I can guarantee that you can get away with doing say 500 or even less. The point is Instead of doing a lot of questions, you should spend a lot of time reflecting on the questions you've done, right? For example, say you do a question, you get it wrong. You don't just look at the solution and think, okay, the solutions make sense. The key is to ask yourself the next big question, why didn't I reach the solution, right? And then you start realizing of different biases that you might have when doing these questions. For example, a bias could be when you see a graph question, your, your brain just shuts off. And that could be because in the past, you've been exposed to graph questions and you've gotten them all wrong and your brain doesn't really want to work towards it because the brain thinks it's going to get it wrong anyway. Now that's, that's something you can start overcoming. As, as soon as you overcome this barrier, this mental barrier you've put yourself in, and then your marks are increasing. Instead, say you're already good at mathematical reasoning, and you just keep doing hundreds and hundreds of questions, and say most of them were mathematical reasoning, and you get them all right, and you get a score of say 80%, yeah, great, but you haven't really increased your mark. You need to work on the 20% you're getting wrong, and at the end of your preparation, so at the end of your preparation, this is really important, at the end of your preparation, you should have a list of skills ordered in from the ones you're good at right at the top to the ones you're really bad at right at the bottom. I had the exact list, so in my list, you know, spatial reasoning was right at the bottom because I knew I was really bad at it. I was trying to work on it, however, I knew even right before exam day, I knew it was not going to be as strong as say my mathematical reasoning. This list you would have made of the skills in order of how good you know them should really guide which questions you do first and which questions you do last. Which transitions us actually into the next point I want to talk about which is the 60-30-20 rule. It basically tells you that instead of doing this exam just front to back as the questions are coming at you, you take charge and do questions you know you're good at first and the one you're not so confident leave it for the end. Now when I started the GAM site it was on paper, it's been online this year. I could go back to paper from 2021. However, the rule stands regardless, right? So when I did the GAM set, there was 110 questions in section 3. I tried to get 60 done in the first hour, 30 in the second and 20 in the last. Now within the first hour then, I would have gotten all my easy marks already. So even if I don't finish the exam, I know I, I did the best I can. 
And for the last 20 that are already the harder questions, you know, you've got more time to do those and they're at the end. So even if you get them wrong, you're probably gonna get them wrong anyway. So you're just trying to maximize the amount of questions you attempt and the amount of questions you get right. Questions in a strategic manner, don't just do them front to back because every time you press next or go to the next page, you're sort of praying it's a good question. And that's not a good strategy. If you have to pray, that strategy. Next thing I want to talk about is taking breaks. It is okay for you to take a couple breaks during the test. If anything, it's really, really helpful for yourself. Now let's look at this graph I've come across, which talks about how your focus drops when you're sitting any test essentially. Now, especially for the Gamset, which is a really long test, naturally your focus will drop as the test goes on. Now, if you just focus on section three and create a timeline of say hypothetically, you had three hours to do this test, your focus will be at its maximum. When you start the test, it's gonna keep dropping, dropping, dropping. And if you don't do anything, it'll exponentially drop all the way to its bare minimum where you're maybe spending two to even three times the time you need to solve a question than you would at the start of the, the test. Take a break. If you take a break, say within the first hour or after the first hour, your focus levels will go up a bit and then it'll drop off again and then you take another break and it'll go up again and then it'll drop off. What we're doing is essentially trying to reset the curve a bit every hour and that's obviously brilliant because the more you focus, the quicker you'll be getting these questions right and the more marks you'll be getting. Don't feel bad to take a couple breaks during this test and if anything, if, if like a minute, two minute break is going to ruin the entire test for you, your, your plan was probably flawed anyway. Like those four minutes shouldn't really affect your score too much, right? The final thing I want to talk about is the time trap. Please don't think the amount of time you pump into Gansat study is going to correlate to your score at the end. I definitely know people who've never even heard the Gansat, sat it for the first time without any prep and aced it, got like a 76. I also know people who would have say studied for six months, even a year, and wouldn't have gotten the score they wanted. The key is to not go overboard and ruin your mental health over this. Study for say three months, four months, but do it in moderation. No need to just go high intensity and forget about everything else in life. Mold the Gamsa study plan around your lifestyle. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. It's just about how smart you're studying. And it comes back to points one and two when I talked about how you're reflecting. I just wanted to touch on how do you actually come up with this list of skills you think you're good at versus you think you're bad at? Because that can be really biased. Like I could think I'm really good at mathematical reasoning, but in reality, I could actually be really bad, right? Things you enjoy doing, not necessarily other things you're good at doing. Uh, we're going deep here. But I think the best idea is for you to use um, some sort of Excel sheet where you're tracking these, right? Where it's really unbiased and it tells you, okay, you're getting, say, spatial reasoning questions wrong the most versus you're getting mathematical questions right the most. Now what that is, is a really unbiased, objective way of telling you where you stand and what that list should be. So if you don't really want any biases in this list you're creating, which is gonna essentially guide which questions you do first versus uh, at the end, use, uh, use something called a question log where you track which questions you're getting wrong and how often and what type of question you're getting wrong. That's it from me guys, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any other questions regarding any of the sections, anything um, you could really use some help feel free to email me I'll, I'll be happy to get back to you um, you can also follow me on instagram where i reply to all, all essentially all the dms i'm also going to be making videos on section one and two which i was just historically really really bad at but i was able to bring my marks up little bits uh, here and there so i could talk about that as well subscribe if you did like the video and i'll see you guys on the next one